Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator, calls the defensive signal for the sideline, and Lee's got a man wide open. It goes deep. Another huge throw on third, and that is Odell Beckham Jr. Lee up firing for the end zone, and he's got it for a touchdown. Reuben Randall, who converted one of the two third downs, he grabs the touchdown. Second down and nine. Man to man. Firing in the air, intercepted on the ricochet. Picked off by LSU's Brandon. Actually, Austin coming from the left beats Matthew. He's able to come across. It's a good throw, but look at Reed right there. Shepard slips over to the left side. Randall to the right. And Ford runs to the left. Daylight. End zone. Touchdown, LSU. Aaron will check on that down below. We'll take a break. LSU opens up a two-touchdown lead. So this will be third down and short, but they've shown us that power eye and their ability to pick up the first down. Let's see if they bring Stampley in as the lead blocker or they bring J.C. Copeland in. J.C. Copeland will get the call this time. He's from LaGrange, Georgia. 6'1", 280. Big time size advantage for the LSU offensive line. You know it's coming. Can you stop it? Number 44 will lead you to it. No, they throw off it. The Mad Hatter is at it again. Touchdown, LSU. Beckham scores. That's 52 yards. Mr. Miles, I don't believe you. Unbelievable call. Coach Miles and Coach Studd, the play caller. There he is. Off to the, That's John Chavis and Coach Studd up there as well. Uh, one thing about it, third and short, eye formation. They bring in the big fullback. You're thinking, okay, pound away, get the three yards for a first down. Great time. They waited and they waited. They get everybody up to the line of scrimmage and to show the courage to call the play. An outstanding job by the LSU coaching staff. And great execution by the play. Zone here. You can throw a costly pick here late in the first half. Matthew. Deflected. Picked off. Matthew. Down to about the one-yard line. That was the zone where you had to really be careful about throwing the football. It was third and a bunch, and here comes the playmaker, Tyron Matthew from New Orleans. Matthew it comes on the blitz, recognizes the play, smacks it, puts it up into the air, and if you're an LSU fan, you've been seeing this now since he was a freshman last year. You're used to this. I got news for you. College football needs to pay attention to number seven at LSU. He's one of the most dynamic playmakers in all of college football. I keep using the comparison, Ed Reed, because he has that six sense to make plays. I don't know how he does it, but he's always there to make plays. The lot trophy would be one consideration. The impact player. No one him. makes Give it to him. more of an impact for LSU than this young man right here. <laughs> I think he knows it too. I think well, he's I think he's aware Dana, of it. Dana Holgerson said that he thought he was the best defensive player he had looked at all year on tape. He said yeah. because he's all over the field from the pistol. Using Austin in motion. Pump fakes in his direction. Comes back middle. Touchdown, West Virginia. Tyler Urban. So they find the tight end. The tight end in this system, of course, flexes off the line. Of the down. Five yards tougher. Set the screen. Got it to the left side. Garrison. Out of bounds inside the five yard line. That is a big time call in that situation. Garrison, the freshman for the touchdown. The coming out of a running back. Through the years of West Virginia, they've had some great running backs here. They're searching. Dustin Garrison may be ending that search here tonight. He's a young man from Pearland, Texas, and he led Pearland to the 5A state championship in Texas. Bittenkurt here, Herbie. And suddenly there's got to be a little unease with the Mad Hatter. This is 
An amazing atmosphere here in Morgantown, and these fans that have stuck around, and everybody's here, they believe that they've got a chance to be able to win this game. The freshman, Garrison, let's talk again, Brent, about the offensive line. They're facing one of the most talented defensive lines in the country, most athletic, one of the deepest defensive lines that you'll see in college football. In fact, Les Miles has been on record this week saying, this is the fastest defense that I've been around, that I've had a chance to coach. These guys were down 27-7, and they have fought back here in the second half to get within six points. And Brent, don't forget, 27-7, and LSU had a chance to potentially put this game away and Reuben Randall dropped that touchdown pass if you remember they would have been able to put them up potentially 34 to 7 the ball is perfectly thrown and he drops it that opened the door for West Virginia and they've come back taking advantage of it then they missed the field goal after that exactly. and Claiborne are back. From the one is Claiborne. Bursts for the 35, 40, 45, midfield. Won't catch him, folks. A 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by sophomore Morris Claiborne from Shreveport, Louisiana. And that followed West Virginia climbing right back into the thick of things. So you lose Patrick Peterson and you think it's going to affect the old return game, right? How about Mo Claiborne there stepping up and Brent, as you said, just when it looked like the stadium, West Virginia had regained the momentum. You want to be ranked up in a one, top one and two or three teams in the country? That's what you've got to be able to do. That was a huge return, and the timing of that return could not have been any bigger for LSU. Ford cuts back, touchdown LSU. Michael Ford for the LSU touchdown. May not have been the dagger, but it's out of the sheath, folks. This is a huge six points going on seven for LSU. Big offensive line. Look at the fullback again, Stanley. You know, he doesn't have a reception or a carry on the year, but he continues to give these tailbacks room to run. You love fullbacks. That they don't get a lot of recognition. But that's a great job to open that, that play up for Michael Ford. Be a classic showdown and see if Taylor Martinez can take the Huskers on the road in what should be a very hostile environment there in Madison. That'll be a great scene next Saturday in Madison, Wisconsin for that game. And the young man takes it in for the touchdown. Alfred Blue, sophomore from Louisiana, 6'2", 215 pounds. That's the second touchdown of the season for Alfred. So, in the end, LSU pulled away. And if you want to look for the turning point in the second half, I'm going to vote with Herbie. It was Claiborne's kickoff return for a touchdown. No question. Either way, but after the big return by Mo Claiborne, LSU, most impressive resume, in my opinion, through the month of September. Very well deserving of being ranked at two and very easily could back, come back uh, on Sunday and maybe be ranked up at number one. If you go by what they've accomplished and you compare that to what everybody else has accomplished, there's no, no reason at all they shouldn't be up at number one. There'll be 36 straight non-conference regular season victories for LSU. Les Miles is with Aaron Andrews. Let's go to Aaron. Brent, thanks. Coach, at the half, you said you were happy with your defense's intensity, but you wanted to see that same intensity in the second half. How'd they do? Yeah, I, I thought we did that. I, you know, there, there was a piece of time where we misfire on offense to put the game out of reach, and so the defense had to go back on and play, and they did did well. I, uh, 
I am very, very satisfied with the defense performance tonight. You come away with the win, but Geno Smith did throw for over 450 yards against your defense. What do you learn from that? Well, one, we got to tackle a little better. You know, there's some, certainly some missed assignments. We're going to get a lot better when we see it. And uh, they're pretty good. They're number one. He can play. And speaking of number one, there's a, a conversation going on right now in our booth with Brent and Kirk and with a lot of people that because of the three convincing wins that you guys have had on the road, you should be number one when the poll comes out. Where do you think you should be? I think it's a compliment to our football team. Certainly, it's not in any way what we want to be. We, we, we understand that we got a lot of work to do. It's a long season in front of us. We play a lot of very quality football teams as we go forward. I think we'd rather sneak up on number one maybe a little later in the year. I don't know if you're sneaking up with anyone <laughs> with that defense, but thanks for joining. <laughs> Coach, I appreciate it. Aaron, see ya. All right, guys. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. Uh, he's become one of our favorites now. <laughs> he's got a little character. <laughs> Les Miles and the LSU Tigers over there saluting their fans who traveled up here for a team that uh, will be one or two this week. That is for sure. Once again, the final score, 47-21. LSU wins again and next Saturday on Saturday Night Football on ABC 8 Eastern. Kirk and Aaron and I will be in Madison, Wisconsin, one of our favorite towns. Nebraska will take on the Badgers. We want to thank everybody for watching ESPN on ABC, and we want to thank this great crew that came in here in this setup. We haven't been here in this stadium for a while. It was fun being here. Great fans in Morgantown. There will be better days for the Mountaineers. Right now, let's take you to the studio for the Ford wrap-up. Here's Robert Flores.